Hello, welcome to the third installment in this MS story series where I talk about what happened after I got diagnosed. In my last video, I talked about how um, I had started to have full body numbness where it started in my hands and feet and then slowly rose until it reached about above my neck. At that point, I was in the ER, I had an MRI and I was diagnosed with MS. The doctors were a bit confused because during the neurological testing, when they would have me push or resist pressure they gave me, try to walk on my tippy toes or balance, everything seemed to be fine. I was just having numbness. But it wasn't until about a week later that things started to make more sense with the severity of my lesions. I started to have a lot of pain in my legs at nighttime and almost as if, I felt as if there was like a cloud over my knee where the, my knee didn't necessarily hurt, but it felt like when I would try to do a motion, like try to run, it was slow, like I was moving through molasses. Seeing me try to run at that time was quite the spectacle. My mom, she thought I was kidding. She went, come on, Sarah. And I was like, mm, that was me really trying. <laughs> but since then it's gotten so much better. I wanted to sprinkle in a few things in this story about how things got worse, but also how excited I was when things got better. So I had some pain in my legs, especially at nighttime kept me up a lot and I also had very strange sensations like there was water running down my legs like on the outside of my legs um, and these what they call pseudo symptoms where you have a feeling but there's not a genuine cause for them so they're fake they're pseudo symptoms it's part of the condition they wouldn't last too long it would last for like a couple of minutes maybe I started to have symptoms of what I can only describe as in my core, where I had such a tightness around my chest, especially exercise induced, like when I would try to jog. It's called the MS hug. It's when your intercostal muscles, which are the muscles that are between your ribs, will kind of contract or spasm when you're doing exercise. So it feels like I had really tight bandages around my rib cage and it made it hard to take deep breaths. Also, it was just very uncomfortable. So at the beginning, it was mostly in my legs and it was mostly hard to kind of walk around. I also had itchiness. It would happen at nighttime and it was mostly on this arm. And so I'd be so itchy all over my arm and all over my legs and it got worse if you itch. So I, a lot of the times I would just have to like lay down for about five to 10 minutes and just try my hardest not to itch. After about a couple of weeks, things started to get worse again. I lost some vision in part of my right eye <laughs> um, where it wasn't like it was completely black. It was like it was spotty and I had it almost looked black and white. My arms really started to become more numb, what I call heavy numbness where there's like the pins and needles numbness, which I still have in this sand. And this arm still has heavy numbness where it feels like I have bandages wrapped really tightly around them. And so when I'm trying to do motions like this, it's like um, more resistance for me to do those motions. Without meaning to, I would hold this arm up. I'm not really not sure why, it wasn't intentional. After the numbness around my neck had subsided after a couple of weeks, what I didn't notice was how much strain I was putting on my sternocleidomastoid muscle here by holding my arm up for like months. <laughs> so I had a lot of neck pain and back pain that luckily was not specifically from the MS so I could be treated like with massage or pain medication. That was something I was dealing with but when things, my most concerning symptom, when things started to get really weird is when I lost my sense of kinesthesia or proprioception in my arms. And what that means is that I don't have like a sense of where it was in space. It was so numb. We would do what's called touch tests because with severe numbness, I would close my eyes and have my family like touch the tips of my fingers and I had to say which finger they were touching. And for a couple of months, especially with this hand, I couldn't tell when I was being touched at all. I, although I could always register temperature and pain. So if their hands were really cold, I could tell. But it, if it was like a pen, I couldn't tell when it was being touched. And then after that, I woke up in the morning and I had my hand over my chest like this and I went to itch my neck and I was itching my leg because I genuinely had thought that my arm was up here because I had a sense of where my limbs are in space, 
but as that started to go, my arm would just like do things and I didn't know what was happening. Like when I would get it, like itches in my arm, it would start to like rise and <laughs> it was almost kind of like, it, it was really hard to feel connected with my body at that time because it, a lot of the things I was trying to do on purpose weren't happening and some things I had no intention of doing were happening. But I would be like washing my hair and then all of a sudden I would feel like a hand around my neck and it was my hand, but I didn't know that at the time. Uh, so I got scared. So that lasted a while. So that was pretty much the extent of my most significant symptoms. There was a lot of like generally fatigue and um, not feeling well, being very sensitive to temperature when I would have to take bath. If the water was too hot, I'd start feeling really bad. I would just feel like I had to cool down, lie down. Um, and that lasted for a while. I don't have that anymore though, so it does get better. One of the most frustrating parts with my hands with the numbness was that like I couldn't feel what was in my pockets. So I would always not know where my phone is. I had to like physically see it uh, or I could, like, couldn't put in earrings. I couldn't button my pants. My family were very nice. And when I didn't want to wear sweatpants for three months and I wanted to wear a pair of jeans, they would help me button my pants. <laughs> And for the longest time, I wasn't able to put up my own hair. But I didn't realize how often I would just have my hair like back in a bun. And because I couldn't feel either hand, and I also couldn't really control what it was doing, I couldn't feel back here about, oh, here's my hair tie. Now I'm going to do this with it. So um, for a couple months, I had to have my family help me with that. A big part that took a lot of adjusting was me getting used to asking people for help because uh, it's something that I didn't really do as an able-bodied person. Now I wanted to get into some parts that I re have really loved about this experience and that's a lot of it is the gratitude that I have for being able to do the things I can now. One morning, I'll never forget this, I was laying in my bed, legs were still fully numb and it was crazy. Within minutes, if this is like my legs and my feet, it was as if like, I don't know, something came over and was like, and I could feel my feet. So I spent the morning kind of like rubbing my feet together and I was like, hee hee hee, I'm so happy uh, to be able to feel them. And that was like a huge day. And then another huge day was when I was able to understand where my limbs were in space and I was like, I could dance that day and uh, I was it just about like a month ago I was able to put up my hair again for the first time and so there's still a couple of things that I have trouble doing but those problems are very very little than what I had beforehand so I'm very grateful but in general it was a scary experience but very frustrating what I had found throughout this is that it's much scarier to see someone you love go through something than to go through it yourself. I was amazed at times of how complicit I was with what was happening. I'm like, well, sorry, there's a kitty back there. <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it right now, right? I'm doing all I can. And um, it would certainly help to know that in most, most cases, it would get better. I think that it would have taken a much larger toll on my mental health if I knew there was a greater uncertainty about whether I'd ever get feeling back in those limbs. And I wanted to take videos of myself in the future to show like where I was. And I now I wish I did do that, but at the time I was just really sad. <laughs> I didn't want to take a video about me not being able to do things or run or walk properly. Since the onset in mid-October, it's been about five months. Um, and my symptoms have greatly improved, but I'm still experiencing some symptoms from the flare. So I, I think I am a rare case. Most people that I've talked to, most cases that I've seen online do not last this long. Um, but I just thought that maybe if someone out there was experiencing a worsening of symptoms like this and they're feeling scared about, oh, I can't see other cases usually lasting this long. Is that okay? Should I be worried about something? I mean, really there's no telling, but same girl. I'm sure there's so many things I'm forgetting, but uh, those are the highlights. So yes, this was 
my current state in my MS flare and um, feel free to leave comments down below. I'd love to hear how you guys are, what you're going through. If you have just any questions, if you don't have MS and are just viewing for educational purposes or curiosity, I'm very willing to chat and uh, connect over this because why not make something good out of something that can be not so good? Okay, that's all. I will see you very soon. And until next time, see you later.